after this, Katie, we did some synthesize, we synthesized some properties. So as well as uh, the solutions that we already had in our different countries, which we shared between each other, Sheevet also developed uh, some fact sheets and solutions of our own by looking at the literature and synthesizing that, collating information, putting it into a format that we could share with everybody. So in the lifetime of the project, we have made 22 fact sheets and they're all on our website here. So if you, I'm sure you're on the website all the time, um, but if you go there, you will find them and um, there'll be the information there. So I'm not gonna go through all of them, you'd be pleased to know, but I'm just gonna give you a few examples so this is a, a, a fact sheet about genetics and management of ovulation rate. So uh, a lot of the information here is, is placed in a nice format, so easy to read. This is about giving information and raising awareness. You remember Claire talked about different ways that we, uh, we can provide information, different sorts of solutions. So this solution is uh, giving the underlying information about why we might use genetics and how we might use it on the farm. How can we implement that in different ways? This is another uh, fact sheet, and this one gives a little bit more practical information. So it's looking at rotational grazing, gives some information about how, uh, how and why you might want to do that. And then some practical information about how this could be implemented. How could you use this um, in, in your farm? So it's uh, partly awareness, but also some uh, potential to, to go away, some methods to go away and use this. Another example of the sort of fact sheets we have is one that gives more information, but also has a nice diagram about how you might follow this through to look at um, improving colostrum quality and, qu and quantity, and how you can increase the transfer of passive immunity in lands. So there's different bits of information about why it's important, how you can change things to, um, to bring about um, differences in quantity and quality, and put some of the main scientific findings from the work that's been done over the last few years into context for how it might be applied on the farm. Just a final example here, and this is, uh, once we're close to my heart. Um, so this is uh, thinking about the behavior of using lambs. Why is it important to get lots of colostrum into your lambs? Uh, what does it do when animals uh, take up colostrum? And um, goes on to tell you a bit more about what we can do and why, uh, how we can manage our animals. So this is just an overview of all the fact sheets. I don't expect you to read them all, but um, you can see there's lots of different things in here about feeding animals, adopting, uh, managing new maternal behavior, rotational grazing, mineral status in sheep, um, other morphology, and much more. So I'm sure that's probably whetted your appetite to get onto our website and find out a bit more. Okay, so we are close to the end, but can you tell us, did we answer to all the questions? No, Jean-Marc, oh, not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we got close, but not quite. <laughs> so, just to remind you what we did through the project, we started out with the, the work that Roberto described by asking questions and trying to understand what were the needs of the industry uh, from our sheep net partners and farmers. And then we looked, uh, do some of these solutions already exist? Can we share them between different countries? And you've heard a lot about that. And then we thought, well, are there some practical solutions that perhaps aren't being shared uh, by advisors, but the farmers know these things. So again, we shared some of those tips and tricks. And then we collated some of the information that was in the scientific literature to answer some of those questions in our fact sheets. But there were still some questions for which we did not find any answers. So those are the things that we think are the future research requirements. These are places where perhaps we need more information. And we found 19 different questions. So I think there were 60 or 70 questions that were asked by our farmers. 19 of those, we didn't have enough information to be certain that we had a solution. So those are areas where we think we should be looking for more information. Um, and they weren't clustered in one area. They were across the piece. So there was a lot of interest in new tools. We've heard a lot about PLF tools. Are there more tools that we could be using? 
There's a lot of interest in things that are going to make uh, it easier to do things. So thinking about how we use labor on the farm. But then there was also still questions about things that we think we might know quite a lot about, about feeding, about animal health, about reproduction management. But as we become more efficient, or as we start to ask more complicated questions, we realize we don't always know all the information that would allow us to address all those questions. And finally, if we think about the genetics, the breeds, the sort of traits that we might want, the sort of environments that we might put sheep in, and how those things interact, we realize that we still don't know enough about how different breeds might cope in different environments, or different sorts of genetics that we might want to achieve different sorts of outcomes. So there's still more work to do for sheep. Then.